Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, my name is Pastor Billy here, uh, if you guys don't know who I am. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, one thing I love and one, one, one of my favorite actors is Will Smith. You know, yeah, you guys know Will Smith, right? But I, not Will Smith from Men in Black or not Will Smith from Hitch, but growing up in the 90s, I remember when Will Smith was a rapper, you know, when he was uh, playing songs like Jiggy With It. And, you know, when he was in this awesome sitcom, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know, that was an awesome show. But, you know, now he's doing more important things, like uh, he's in movies, like, like I said, he's in Hitch, Men in Black, ID4, I think he's making another ID4 part two, Pastor Sam's, one of Pastor Sam's favorite movies. And um, apparently, like this guy, uh, Will Smith, he's apparently became one of the most powerful um, actors in Hollywood. You know, if you, uh, in one magazine, it actually um, tells that he's actually worth, or net worth, like $188 million. You know, that's a lot of money. And um, I remember a year ago, he, ha he had an interview with Oprah Winfrey. And in that interview, um, you know, he was just sharing, and he was confessing that even though, like, um, he had all this fame, he had all this success, and he had all this money, um, often he would feel like worried or afraid that he might not have enough at the end of the day. He still was uh, feeling financial burdens. So this guy, Will Smith, who has all the success and the power in the world, you know, in, or in Hollywood, sorry, and um, this guy who has a lot of zeros in his bank account and has millions of dollars, st still feels like he might not have enough um, at the end of the day. And it just comes to show that no matter how much external security that you might have, it still won't provide for you the safety and the stability of your internal world. Because the truth of the matter is, deep within every heart, we all have an emotional need to feel secure. Everyone here needs to feel like they're protected, and everyone here feels like they, know, they need to know that they're being taken care of. But because this world is broken, because this world is limited and the economy sucks, you know, it's horrible, um, often we try to fill that need by taking control of our own lives. You know, so we do our best to try to manage our relationships. We do our best to try to work hard and to succeed. We do our best to just, um, you know, just set everything around us because maybe we think that if we control certain things in our lives, it will make us at least feel like we're okay. It makes us feel like that everything's going to be all right. But just like the uh, illustration with Will Smith, you know, it just comes to show that no matter how much external security that you have, it still won't bring satisfaction to the most internal, emotional parts in our lives. And why is that? Because at the end of the day, true security is found in an eternal attitude that can only be filled by Jesus Christ. That's why in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And in him, there's everything I need. Meaning that when, Jesus, when we believe in Jesus Christ and we put him as our Lord, he is the one that will provide everything in our lives, externally and interly, internally. And what Jesus here is inviting us to is that when he is our Lord, when he is our shepherd, he, will be, he not only will be a or take care of our souls, but he will also take care of everything in our life. And when we enter in, and have Jesus in the center. And when we enter in and have him as our king, he invites us to his kingdom. And in his kingdom is the kingdom of abundance. His kingdom or in his house is like a Thanksgiving dinner every day. You know, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of things going around, and there's plenty of leftovers that you bring turkey, you know, back into your house. That's the life of the kingdom. It's that abundant. And that's the life that Jesus is inviting us to today. So, Today, I want to talk about the security found in the kingdom of God. The security that we find in having Jesus as our king and, and Jesus as our Lord. So today, we're going to turn to Matthew 6, and I'm going to answer this question, how do I live in the security of the kingdom of God? And so let's turn um, to Matthew 6. So 25, verse 25, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not 
sow, reap, or store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than, the, than they? Can, they be, can any of you worry by adding a single hour to your life? And in verse 28 it says, Then why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. So in this passage, you see Jesus repeating the words, do not worry, again and again. And actually in this passage, he commands us not to worry. And why is that? Because Jesus knows at the end of the day that worrying does not add any value in your life. In fact, what worrying does, it brings a malaise to your life and to life's problems. It actually makes you lose perspective and it actually clouds your vision. Kind of like when you're driving in a dense fog, you just can't see. And that's what happens when you worry. It exaggerates um, all of life problems. It makes you um, lose sight of what's really going on. For example, there was one time like last year, um, we went for Nathan's birthday to the Museum of Natural History. And it was awesome. We saw cool dinosaurs and then we got tired in an hour. But I remember that day um, when, in Nathan's birthday, it was raining really, really hard. It was like a huge thunderstorm. And, and we were all into the, va- the faith van, you know, our faith van. And the staff and all the pastors and Nathan was in there. And as we were leaving, um, we were driving in the FDR. And it was just a lot of puddles. It was a lot of rain. And now some of you guys know all of a sudden it just stopped. It just shut down in the middle of the FDR. And let me tell you, when I was there, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, we're in the middle of the FDR. I think we're going to die. You know, cars are like whizzing by us. People are like honking. And I'm the one driving here. You know, and I'm like, oh man, what happens if we get into a car crash? We're going to be in heaven. And we're gonna, one eight is going to collapse. And everyone's going to blame me. And I was freaking out. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then out of all people, right, Ro comes into the picture. It's his birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Ro. Ro comes into the picture, and he goes, Pastor Billy, calm down. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because Ro, Ro, is, Ro has taken care of that faith mobile, you know. He has a lot of faith with that car, you know? <laughs> Ro, Ro tells me, Pastor Billy, calm down. All what's going on is you just flooded uh, the van because there's a lot of water. So just wait a couple of minutes. And he's like, Ro, it's not working. It's not working. He goes, P. Billy, just chill out for a little bit. Turn it on neutral. Turn the key on, and it'll be all right. And you know what? It worked. I was like, oh, thank God, bro. Thank God you're here. And I think just like that, it comes to show when, um, when we step back and we realize that God is in control, and we step back and we realize that um, God can take care of all the circumstances in our life, it gives us a clarity and a perspective of all of life's problems. Because the truth of the matter is, whether you're a believer or not, we're going to encounter problems um, no matter uh, what happens in our life. We're just going to encounter, um, you know, just issues. But the, me- the message here and what God is trying to say to us is that when we see the bigger picture and we know and can acknowledge and realize that God is in control, we can learn how to respond to them. You know, often people, you know, that try to take control of our lives, you know, we often... Um, see the results of, you know, worrying. Because, you know, the fact of the matter is, like, let's say you do worry about your life. And let's say that you do, wor- like, for example, like a test. You know, you focus really hard and you could actually do well and get your A, you know, on your test. Or, like, let's say you focus on, you know, just, like, making sure the door's not closed, uh, the making sure the door's locked. So you focus all your time and energy and you notice and you, and you realize that the door will be locked, you know. And it will bring some functionality into your life. But at the end of the day, what taking control does and being so consumed by worry does, it robs and chokes the, the joy out of your life. Today, what God is talking about is to realize that he is in control of everything, even of life's problems, so that we could actually live a life that's free from anxiety and free from those issues and those problems. And he's going to give us the ability and the emotional stability to be able to just look at it, think that it's not, it's not that bad, and be able to feel secure and safe and walk through those problems. So that's the first point of uh, today. How do we live in the security of God's kingdom? Is step back and see the bigger picture. So my question to you guys today is this. Is, uh, what are the anxieties and what are the fears in your life? 
You know, what are the things that choke your life down? And where do you need to find perspective and need God's perspective to speak into those places in your life? So let's go next. So in verse 31, it says, um, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So the question is, why does Jesus say, seek first his kingdom, and all of these things will be given to you as well? Why does he say that? Well, Jesus is saying that, or what, what Jesus wants from our lives is to put our lives into his hands. Because Jesus has a promise here. And the promise is this. The promise is that if we can walk into God's purpose and God's purpose in our lives, he will promise to fulfill every need. He might not provide everything that we want, but in this passage, he does promises that he will provide for every need. Like, for example, um, I remember in high school, you know, I was deciding on a college, and I felt led to go into ministry, so I went to Nyack College. It's a Bible school. And I told my parents that, and they're like, Nyack what? What's Nyack College? You know? And, uh, you know, like, you know, in SI Tech, I don't know, for some of you guys, here, they usually have like a, like a mural, not a mural, but like a poster of all the students and what schools that they go to. You know, you know like, and, you know, tech is kind of smart. 33, what's up, you know? Like, and, you know, you see all these Ivies or these popular colleges, and all of a sudden you see William Kim, Naya College, and my friend's like, yo, what's that? <laughs> you know, and, you know, my parents were the same. We were like, what's Naya College, and why do you want to go to a Bible school? And I was like, you know, I felt led. You know, I want, I want to go into ministry. I feel this calling in my life, mom, mom dad. And, you know, you know and, and, and every, you know, loving parent, you know, they don't want us to, or they didn't want me to, like, live an unstable life, because ministry can be hard. R ministry is risky. You know, and they told me to be more smart about my decision. You know, go to a secular school. Go to a school that provides you a little bit more money. Go to a school that, you know, where you could get a degree and you could fall back to just in case if it doesn't pan out or if it doesn't work out, you know? And that's what my parents' uh, logic was. And they came in a, more, in a loving way, of course, and for the best of me. Um, but in the tension of it all, you know, to be honest with you, you know, uh, I still felt this calling and this leading. And even despite my parents' uh, you know, opinions, I still went to apply for NIAC and I got in. And in the process of it all, there was a lot of arguments, there was a lot of fights. In the process, there was a lot of tension and a lot of uncertainty. But a cool thing happened along the way. For some reason, this distant aunt that I'd never met, you know, I guess she heard from my mom, heard that I was going to go into ministry. So she wrote a check for $10,000. This distant aunt that had no idea wrote a, uh, a check for $10,000, and, and she gave it to me because she knew I was going into ministry. And it was actually that much um, that would pay for my tuition that, in my freshman year. And it was really cool, and it was a really powerful statement in my life because, first, like, it showed that God does really provide when you, when you follow in his destiny. And, two, it actually gave me confirmation, and my parents' confirmation, this is the right direction in my life. And I think in the same way, what... Jesus is showing here is that, you know, when you walk into uh, trusting in God and in, the, and in his destiny, even though when it might feel uncertain and unknown, he will provide for you. He will take care of your life. And what Jesus is asking for you is more like, of us today, is more like a response to faith, response to life, to be able to trust him and depend on him, even though it might not feel like it makes sense, or it might not feel like it's unstable because if we can depend on Jesus and if he's the one that's stable in our life, then everything will turn out okay. And that's the second point of this passage. So how do we live in the uh, security of God's kingdom? It's this point. It says walking in destiny is a prerequisite for stability. So for us today, you know, for those that are believers, uh, my, my question is to you is do you guys walk like your practical atheist. And what I mean by that is, you know, you say that we're Christians and, you know, we believe in God, but do we really uh, give our life and give control to him 
even in the places of the most unknown, in the, in the, in the places where we're most afraid. Now, I feel like God is at, uh, calling some of us believers here to relinquish that control again and to walk in the destiny because I think one of the greatest temptations in our lives, especially as Christians, is to forfeit our destinies for the sake of a, a little bit of stability. And for us un- unbelievers here, I think what God is calling you today and what God is inviting you to you is an uh, is invitation to stability that's found in Jesus. And not only will you find a stability in Jesus, but you also will find a destiny found in Christ. You get two in one. How awesome is that? But that's the, kingdom, uh, that's the invitation of what the abundance of the kingdom of God and the security of the kingdom of God. And today I feel like he wants to invite us all back into that perspective again. So can you please stand with me and let's pray? So Father, um, I just want to pray for today. And God, I just want to pray that um, whatever struggles that we're dealing with, Lord, and um, all the insecure places in our life, God, I pray that once again we will put that into your hands, Lord. Father, I pray that we will be able to know and to hear your voice today to trust in you and put faith in you and have you as the center and the security of our life. So, Lord, I want to lift this up to you, and we want to pray this in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, um, we come before you tonight. I'm sure that there are a lot of anxiety, and it's different for everyone in this room. Some might be financial. Some might be different. But God, we come to you because it's impossible for us. No matter what we do, we cannot control control. We can't control what happens. And what I want you to see right now as we pray, as Pastor Billy gave us the word, that worrying does not add a single hour or minute to your stature, the passage says. It takes away from us. And what God wants to deal with tonight um, is not necessarily the results of your worry. Yeah, God does promise that he'll provide the needs. And you saw a powerful testimony from his life. How many people want $10,000 right now? God could write that check. It's okay. But that's not the point. The point is, when you're worried, when you're worried, what comes out of you? The doubt you have in God. The questions you have about God. It's the struggle of your vision of God that needs to be corrected tonight. And this is where faith comes in. Really, the issue is not can I control my life. The issue is can I trust God with my life? Do I give my life into his hands? Because when you put your life into your hands, it turns to a mess. So today would you lift your hands to God and say, God, I'm coming back to that place where I put my life into your hands, where I put my story into your hands, where I put my spirituality into your hands, my destiny into your hands. And pray, God, that you bless my life and you lead my life. Will you do that with me as we sing? So, Father, tonight, we thank you for your faithfulness in our life. We thank you that you are big enough to take our lives into your hands. And as you pray right now, I want you to think about this as we close tonight. Sometimes God does not give you things in in advance because if he gave you the things that you wanted in advance or needed in advance, it might conflict with the things that he's trying to work in you. You go, well, I wish God would just take care of that so that I can relax. You You ever grew when you were relaxed? No. You never change when you're relaxed and you're like, oh, everything's okay. No, you don't change. You want to have fun then. 
So you look into your life right now, the things that you're worrying about are being used to change you. And really what, what is used to change you is your vision of God. So you go, well, if I have this much today, I will be fine for the next five days. But, but the Bible says, Jesus said, pray like this, what? Give us today, what? Our daily bread. So will you tell God, God, whatever comes into my life, whatever lack I have, I trust you with it. I put my life into your hands. I want you to not just provide for me, but I want you to make me the best who I can be so I can fulfill my destiny in God's kingdom. So will you just lift your hands to God right now and pray that prayer in your heart. Say, God, I trust you daily. I trust you daily. Father, we bless that. And we pray miracles. We pray for deliverance. We pray for supernatural power to happen in those daily moments when we trust God and turn our life into God's hands. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a clap offering to the Lord. Pastor Joe will come up and finish off with prayer.